Gamita Cell is an advanced cell therapy company developing potentially curative therapeutics for patients with cancer. And with me is the president and CEO of Gamita Cell, Abby Jenkins, to talk about the company. Great to have you here. Thank you so much, Jane. Excited to be here. So tell me, how is the company transforming stem cell transplantation? Sure. Well, we here at Gamita Cell, we've been working to transform cells into powerful therapeutics for people with cancer for the last 20 years. And we're it's very exciting year, 2023. Our lead product candidate, Amidubis Cell, if approved by the FDA, we have a target action date of May 1st, 2023. If so, we'll be the first allogeneic stem cell transplant approved in the United States for patients in need of, a, of an allogeneic stem cell transplant. So it's very exciting to be sort of the first pharmaceutical grade product like that. And that is introducing an, a new alternate donor source to patients in need of a transplant. Okay. So explain that the, the allogeneic, what does that mean exactly? So allogeneic means that it's coming um, from somewhere outside of you. So from a different donor source, autologous would be that you're taking your own cells taking them out of the body, um, manipulating them in some way and putting them back. That would be like your CAR-T therapies or those types of cell therapies. Mm -hmm. um, and allogeneic is cells derived from another person. So in our case, our cells are derived from umbilical cord cells. Mm -hmm. And then we apply our proprietary mixture of nicotinamide to expand the cells to increase the sheer number, but also enhance them. And in this case, we're enhancing their ability to home to the bone marrow to produce something called neutrophil engraftment. It's basically a reconstitution of the immune system, which enables the patient then to, um, to potentially live uh, after the transplant, overcome their, their blood cancer. And this would be the first such treatment that would be approved by the FDA? Um, yes, as an allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Yes, okay. kind of, a pharma if you want to think about it, more of a pharmaceutical grade transplant rather than a patient to patient transplant. Got it. Okay. Would this work with all cancers or some cancers or what cancers are you targeting? Um, we are primarily focused on hematologic malignancies or blood cancers like AML, uh, for example. So it, it can be used potentially in any patient who's indicated and in need of a, of a stem cell transplant, but the primary population expected to be in need of a hematopoietic stem cell transplant is a patient with a hematologic malignancy or blood cancer. Blood cancer. Okay. And then, and you mentioned May of 2023. So you must have gone through some clinical trials already with this treatment. So what have, what have those shown you? Sure. So we've gone, as with any ther typical therapy going through an FDA review process, we've done phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. And then we've now filed for our biologic license application, which is that last step in, in pending FDA review and potential approval. So a phase three trial that we conducted was looking at Amidubicel, our hematopoietic stem cell transplant cell therapy, advanced cell therapy, compared to standard cord blood which would be that kind of uh, just standard off the shelf core blood rather than our enhanced product. Um, and the results were very significant on that important endpoint of neutrophil engraftment, which is that indicator of, of long-term outcomes. We had a time to neutrophil engraftment, a median time to neutrophil engraftment of 10 days in the intent to treat uh, as treated rather population compared to 20 days in the as treated population with standard cord blood. So a highly statistically significant reduction in the days or time to neutrophil engraftment. Now, when my children were born, uh, they had their cord blood stored. Is that is, and we pay, you know, a fee every year to keep it. stored. is that where you're getting this treatment? Well, so that would be a case of a private bank, and okay. those cells are really just for you, um, okay. you and your family to use as you're paying that fee. But most of our, but where we're deriving ourselves is from a public registry. So Be the Match is um, one of the partners that is the key partner that we work with, which has a national registry in the U.S. of of donated uh, cord blood units. Interesting. And then, um, are there any other treatments in your pipeline? We do have a robust pipeline. So this Amidubicel, our lead advanced cell therapy candidate pending FDA approval is certainly the most advanced, but we do have a pipeline of what are called natural killer advanced cell therapies. And that's take, it's a similar concept where we're taking cells and turning them into cell therapies or powerful therapeutics. In this case, we're using intrinsic donor derived natural killer cells 
And we are applying our nicotinamide mixture to expand and enhance. In the case of the NK cell therapies, where we're looking for enhancement in the properties of NK cells or natural killer cells. So we're increasing their resistance to oxidative stress and we're increasing their cytotoxic properties. And so we have a phase one, two clinical candidate in the uh, called GDA 201, which is the most advanced in the NK pipeline. And then we also have three further engineered NK cell therapy assets, which have the added property of increased tumor targeting, uh, more precise tumor targeting, which enables us to move out of just purely blood cancers into potentially solid tumors as well. So we okay. have about four, four active agents in the pipeline, one of which is in a clinical stage of development. Interesting. And uh, finally, I mean, you, how big is, of a market could this be for blood cancer treatment? Well, what I can tell you is that there are about 10,000 transplants every year. And we've heard some numbers uh, ranging from uh, 1,200 to up to 5,000 patients who are even eligible for transplant, but simply not a, not able to find a match. So we believe that the market is potentially up to 10% or 50% bigger than it is today. And we believe that we have an opportunity introducing Amidubacel if it's approved by the FDA to especially reach those patients, which in many cases may be minority patients, either ethnically or racially diverse patients, um, who simply aren't able to find a match. In fact, according to Be The Match, only 29% of patients who are Black are able to find a match in the registry today, compared to 79% of patients who are white. Okay. And in our clinical trial with Amidubacel, we've been able to have 93% of patients in the trial find a match. So we believe there's definitely an opportunity to expand the market of patients who have access to a treatment, uh, a transplant. And we believe that even within the currently available alternate donor sources, that there's a unique place where Amidubacel can further improve outcomes across patients as a new advanced cell therapy. Yeah. Wow. Well, that could really be a game changer. Um, for people that have that. So thank you so much, Abby, for coming in and explaining the company and what you're working on. Good, sure, good luck. Thank you for having me. Thank you.